Hello ladies and gents, welcome back. In this video I'm gonna talk about my thoughts about the US Open draw. It's this year's second Grand Slam, but normally we play Wimbledon between, but due to this COVID-19 virus it was cancelled. And this time it's play, they play without audience like they have done this pre-tournaments before the US Open, so it will be another atmosphere because the new atmosphere usually is amazing if you have seen many match if you have seen any matches from uh, previous years you know that you open is one of the biggest sport events in the, in the world it's in the metropolitan the big apple so i'm very sad that they don't have fully crowded arenas but it's better than nothing so we're going to see most of the top players in the world. We know that Nadal and Federer are not here. Wawrinka is not here. And the Mofils also. So this Grand Slam is one of the most unpredictable Grand Slams if you compare to the others because we all usually know who's gonna win. At least for me it's no problem to predict the other Grand Slams but you Open it has been a little bit different. Even though Nadal won last year, he's, he's, he was a defending champion and the Novak the year before and Nadal before him. But we have seen Wawrinka, Del Potro, Murray come between the big three. So it's an open field on the bottom half of the draw. I saw both of the halves. Uh, Novak is in the top half, of course, the undisputed uh, group best player in the world right now he hasn't lost an official official uh, comp uh, competitive match this year his winning streak count is still counting or still counting he won his second C cincinnati title yesterday against raunich and doubled his career golden masters which is the only person that have done that before and now he's done it for a second time it's pretty amazing numbers he won his 35 uh, Master's title, he's, he, he equaled Nadal's record. So Novak is just, in my eyes, too supreme right now. But in this tournament, it's a five-set tournament, we have room for upsets, like always. So we, I think we're going to see some upsets this year too. But the, but the question is, will Novak fall? We will see. So let's dig into the draw. I will start with the bottom half of the draw, where Dominic Thiem is seeded as number one, number uh, two, and uh, he is the main favorite if you look at the paper. But paper is not the same as business, because when you put your game to the table, it doesn't look at your ranking. It looks at which which player for today has the most quality. Who has the most? Uh, who was most consistent? Who was more clutch and and etc. Uh, etc. Et so, being seen, number two seed doesn't mean anything, rather than that you have a, a, a easier draw, and Dominic team have an easier easier draw this time also. He starts with Monar in the first round, and then we'll probably meet Nagal, the Indian guy that charmed the world. I think it was last year or the year before he. Won one or two matches before he lost to Roger Federer. And then in round three, he can meet a former champion like Cilic if he takes him there. But I'm not convinced in his level anymore. He has dropped his level a lot since his victory or or since, since 2017 to be exactly. So the Dominic team's first couple of rounds are pretty easy in my opinion. And his... Real first test comes uh, in maybe in the fourth round. Maybe we can have an upset alert here. I'm I'm not hundred percent sure if if this guy takes himself to the fourth round. But Daniel Evans is a tricky player. I don't think that he can cause any damages. But you never know. He's a solid player. When he wants to play tennis, he play good tennis. He has challenged Federer before. I'm. I, I will not be surprised if he takes one or two sets 
from team if he goes to the fourth round. And then we have this section is pretty crowded with great players. We have Kachanov, we have RBA, we have Raunich. All of these players are in the same section as Dominic team. And those are the players that can meet him uh, in uh, on 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 the way his way to the final. So I'm not sure about this one, but till the to the quarter final, Dominic team have an, will have a trick tricky opponent because RBA, who is a solid hardcore player, he's great. We have seen him during the Cincinnati. He almost reached the final. He lost to Djokovic in the semi-final. We have Raunic on his section too, who lost the final. We have Khachanov. I, I, I don't know if, why I mentioned him because this dude, this guy hasn't done anything correctly in my eyes since his victory at the ATP Masters in the Paris indoors in 2018, where he beat Novak Djokovic. Otherwise, but he's. He gets through this first couple of rounds, so I think that he can really surpass. He has the first, his first match is against Yannick Sinner, who is, in my opinion, one of the best next-gen players, but this year he hasn't touched the level that he had yet last year. So I, will, I think that Kachanov will pass him and probably meet Query in the second round. And in the third round, I think it's his... Biggest test so far, he will meet, I think, uh, Deminaur. And after that, he will wait for the winner between Raunic and Arbe in the third round. That is an... This match is a... How do you say it? A wait. It, it can tip in advantage for Raunic or Arbe. And one of those players is going to reach deep. Because no matter who plays against Kachanov... I think both of them will win against him. And Khachanov's uh, first three matches are not that difficult, except uh, Dimenaur. So in the fourth round, I don't know. This is a tough decision for me because RBA have a tennis sangram in the first round. He's a very tricky player. We saw last year against Federer. He can challenge. He is a superb baseline play player. He's a great mover, he has a great forehand, great tennis mind, great serve. Both first and second serve are great, so it's very tricky for RBA in the first round because he has his home crowd, not, not, not the crowd, but uh, he plays on home, home soil, so it, it's a tough match to begin with. Not everybody wants to meet a player like Tennis Sandberg, that you can't read this game. He's just, he's just, he's like a ball machine also, but a lighter version of a, a superb ball machine like Medvedev, uh, Djokovic, Arbe. He, but he is here to win also a couple of matches. So Arbe will have a tough task, and then if he can get through Sangren, I think he will meet Kishmanovic, a young talented Serb, I think. If he gets through him, he will probably meet Raonic, and Raonic has. Florian Mayer in the first round and then in the second round I think he will play against an oldie, Philip Kohl Kohlschreiber with, the, with one of the greatest serve motions and a sup one of the greatest backhands I ever seen. Not consistent but beautiful backhand. Textbook backhand with a lot of angles, with a lot of power, with a lot, with a lot of precision. So this is where I'm stuck because I can't choose if if I look at the reason form I, I have to choose around each if I have to choose the more consistent player the last two years I have to choose Orbe but I will get back to them later and then in the bottom bottom half of the draw we also have Daniel Medvedev the ball machine from Russia, the guy that uh, barely misses a ball, but we saw in the Cincinnati Open that he was human. He couldn't get through RBA there. He had some problems. He made too many mistakes. He made some tactical wrong decision by standing far behind the baseline on, on um, RBA's serve. The returns were terrible. 
he, I think he will improve that before he, he enters the US Open. I think he has that in his mind. His staff, they have uh, checked through his problems. And uh, I think that he will get himself to a quarterfinal without problem because his draw is pretty easy in my opinion. So who did he play? I think, he, yeah, he played Delbonis in the first round and then Las Rogere. And in the third round, he has PCB, Pablo Carreno, Busta. Those three matches, he, sh he should win them pretty easy. But in the fourth round, I think that he can have a little bit problem against either Jon Milman, a guy that some of you tennis fans are familiar with uh, in um, both the US Open and the uh, Australian Open where he gave Roger a r hell of a run for his money. He beat him at US Open and almost beat him at a AO. So either Dimitrov or Milman will face Daniel Medvedev in the fourth round. And on that section, we also have this young Italian dude with the huge serve, the huge forehand, um, okay backhand, not a superb mover, but anyway, it's Matteo Berrettini. He has two Japanese guys. I think he will meet two Japanese guys in his first two rounds. It's Sueda and then later the tricky uh, lefty Sugita. I don't know. They can take one set from him, both of these players because he's not that super consistent, but he has a semi-final spot to defend from last year, so Berrettini is the favorite in this section. And then in the potential uh, forum, I think he will, further on he will meet Bedene, and then if he wins against Bedene, he have Andrei Rublev, I think, in the fourth round. A guy that can cause an upset. So either we will have a Russian quarterfinal or Berrettini. I will get into that later uh, also. If I can remember all these names. Because if, I don't know how many people, how many ATP pro, pros are part, participating in this uh, tournament. I think it's 64 or was it 128? I forgot. But anyway, that was the bottom half of the draw. So I picked four players that, a couple of players that I think will go to the quarterfinals. I'm pretty sure about uh, Medvedev. And then we have maybe Team. And then I haven't decided between Orbe and Raonic. And uh, let's see. All right. Let's take care of the top half of the draw, let's get into the top half of the draw because new, oh, new US Open this year is super fast uh, contrary to the last year's, uh, previous year's uh, surface this high bouncing surface doesn't give all the players time it gets room for upset you have to stand, you have to have uh, coordination, you have to be on your toes all the time you don't have so much room for tactical changes in the, in, in in this tournament. Even though the game is tactical in in general, but I think in this year's US Open, it's a little bit different. It will suit players like Novak, who has a he's a superb all court player, and he will take advantage of this speedy fast courts. And uh, yes, let's get into the top half of the draw, we have, where we have the top seed, Novak Djokovic, who I, I will put him right now in the quarterfinals. He have, he have David Jumur from Boston in the first round. He have, uh, I think, Kyle Edmund, who have a semi-final spot here in 2017, I think, or was it uh, 2008? I forgot which year. But he reached deep in this tournament, in the Australian Open, so he has a semi-final spot from a Grand Slam to his uh, career. And then in the third round, we have probably, again, Straff, who, who, who made rough uh, times with at Cincinnati. He just blew him away from court. So 
we have Zumur, we have uh, Kyle Edmund in the second round, we have maybe Struff in the third round, and in the fourth round, I think that if Jon Isner can uh, get through these first couple of rounds, if I think he will meet um, Jon Isner, the man with the best serve in the world right now, more consistent serve, we can say. We, Federer has a great serve also, Novak also, but these guys has a um, highest winning percentage in both his first and second serve, I think. So if, if you break Isner, that means that you have a good chance to win and nobody takes care of big serves better than Novak Djokovic. We all know that. Uh, we saw yesterday against Raonic where he broke him a couple of, uh, couple of times, but this time it's, it's, Isner is more consistent. He has a superb forehand. He's a uh, he's great mover. He likes to come around to hit with his forehand. His backhand is okay. He's uh, preferred to slice, but he can cause damages, of course. And who will Novak meet in a potential quarterfinal? We have a bunch of guys on his side. We have maybe Krajinovic. We have uh, Shapovalov. We have Gofen on that, on that section. To be honest, I don't think that this, uh, this time that Gofen will get through to a quarterfinal. I think that uh, one of my upset alerts in this tournament. I have uh, three of them, I think. No, two of them. The first one is Tennis Sangreen. He can for sure beat RB in the first round. And then my other is Riley Opelka with the huge serve, the light version of Jon Isner. He can send the Be Belgian wizard home. But remember that Gouffin is a smart player. So if he can, if Gofan gets through the first round and the second round and the third round. He, he will, I think he will meet, meet Krajinovic in the third round. So he has some tough opponents on his way to a quarterfinal. That's why I think that this time he, he will, he can go through, but my gut feeling says that Gofan packs his bag in the first week and He's uh, done the first week, so... And who is Novak Djokovic going to meet in the quarterfinal? That's my question. It's between, in my opinion, either Shapovalov or Krajinovic. Because uh, if I if I go with my prediction, I think they will meet in the fourth round and not Gofan. So one of these guys will meet Novak in the, in, in the um, uh, quarterfinal. And Shapovalov, who, I don't know, I forgot who he played against in the... Yeah, he played Korda, Kwon, and Fritz in the third round, I think. And after has to take on Krajinovic, who will take care of uh, Gofan in the third round. One of these guys is going to battle for a place in the quarterfinal against Novak Djokovic. Yes, that's my thoughts. And then we have the golden boy of tennis, the guy that I talked in my previous video a lot, of, a lot about. Stefano Tsitsipas, if he started return, if he starts to re return better, if he can be more clutch, if he can take that extra step, because it's his time now. If he can take this extra step and perform, because his first rounds are pretty easy. It's Alberto Ramos, Vilnovas, and then he's have this Kovalik in the second round and. Um, Korea in the third, I think. And then in his fourth round, I think he will have either Kukushin or the Chilean, Chilean star Garin. So those are pretty okay matches for him. Uh, matches that he should get through. He should win those matches and book a place in the quarterfinal. Sisi Pass have all the tools. When, when I see him, he reminds me of Federer at a young age, but he, he was more consistent. He has he had better backhand and Federer in the early age and probably a little better returns than him. But he has to get everything together because Federer's serve is out of this world. His hands, his forehand, we don't have to talk about. That's why he has won 20 Grand Slam. He hasn't won 20 Grand Slams with his backhand and, or his returns, my friends. 
And um, yes, the, I think that it's possible to advance there together with Novak on, on, on the top half of the section. And then we have a place, le a, a, a spot left. And who will take that spot? It's a tough call between Swatchman and Shasha Zverev because Schwarzman, who who does he play against? He play against Cameron Moore in the first round, and then he has uh, this. Um, I think it's an Argentinian player, Korea and Hurkash in the third round. I think, uh, and Zverev have Kevin Anderson and uh, Lorenzi from Italy. I think will advance to the second round, and um, who's the third player in the third round for him? I think the lefty from France. A tricky player, but very inconsistent, like most of the French dudes that we have seen the last 20 years. And that's Manarino, a guy that I'm, I will not be surprised if he takes out Zverev. I will not be surprised. And I will not be surprised either if he doesn't go to the third round, either uh, both Zverev and Manarino. But then we have an um, same matchup from the last year. And that's between Shasha Zverev in the fourth round and Diego Swatchman. Last year, Swatchman took his teeth into Zverev. He didn't let the grip. He played smart. He made Zverev move around the court. He changed the rhythm of the game. I remember that match. He, Zverev served not terrible in that match, but not good enough to win three points because we know Swatchman, though he's a short player, he's a very solid returner. So he re read Zverev's serve and he could uh, challenge him from baseline. And Zverev, he was so in in inconsistent in that match. I, I, I almost forgot that. But the better play won in that match without a doubt. And this time I think that Alexander Zverev will get a revenge. So I will give him my quarterfinal spot against Tsitsipas on the top half of the section. So, and we had some names that I was uncertain of who will go to the quarters. And I, I was still thinking, to be honest. But I'm not going to take your time. So I'm going to go with Shapovalov and Novak in the first quarter. And then um, I will go with Tsitsipas Zverev in the second quarter final. And on the bottom half of the draw. Oh, who, who would I, I will take Medvedev against. Should I take Berrettini or Rublev? I will take Berrettini because he has a better serve, a better forehand. On his good day, Rublev will take him out, but I'm not sure about his uh, uh, game now. I haven't seen anything special in Cincinnati. Uh, same way with Berrettini. So I haven't seen him play for a long time. So if I have to go with my gut feeling, I would say Medvedev, Berrettini in one of the quarters. And in the bottom half of, bottom half of the draw we have one name left is it team or is it daniel evans from the fourth round or is it rba or roundage that's a that's a tough call for me but i will go with rba on this one i don't know why it, it can go either way i think that roundage has a good as chance as him has a his the way he hit his forehand during the Cincinnati was pretty amazing. But when he made those four three straight errors in 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 the second set against uh, Novak, when he blew this first break in the set, third set, he was up 2-0. And Novak tricked him into come to the net. And we know that Raonic is not the best net player. Uh, those kind of small things that great players like Novak, Nadal and Federer does to their opponents to lure them to net 
to change the, the from their A game to the B game. That that's a, one of the difference between these these dudes and the other ones. So I will go with RBA because RBA he 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 will do his best of course, but I, I'm not sure because he's an all around all round court player. He has the great he's a great mover. He has a great forehand. He has a normal great backhand. That it's not average, a little bit better than average. He's a clutch player. He doesn't uh, disappear for long. And I think that he can beat Raunich. And I think he will do that. So he will meet. Uh, I want. My heart says Evans. I'm not, I, I'm not. I'm not sure why. But should I go with Evans in my prediction? Be a little bit bold. Yes, I will go with Daniel Evans. I don't know why. I like this guy. He's not the best player on, on the. I forgot his ranking, but I feel it's time for a little bit uh, upset. I have him as one of my uh, upset alerts, so I will go with him. I think that he will beat Dominic Thiem in the fourth round. Laugh at me now, and maybe you can laugh more, more at me later, but I will pick Daniel Evans against uh, RBA in one of the quarters. So my dark horses was Raonic, Rublev, and Evans. And my upset alerts was Opelka and Tennis Angren. So in the first quarter, I think that Shapovalov on a good day can take one set, but not more than that. We have the 17-time Grand Slam champion. He wants to give Shapovalov. I remember what he did to him at the Paris Open last year. So. He, he knows how to handle his young guns, especially a player like uh, Shapovalov. And on the other quarterfinal between Zverev and Tsitsipas, I give my edge to Tsitsipas. Even though Zverev can surprise us, he can crash out in the first round or go to the semifinal. We never know about his status. But in Cincinnati, he served terrible in his last match. So uh, I don't give him high hopes, but my... Gut feeling says he will reach a quarterfinal, but Zverev will, uh, Tsitsipas will be too strong this time. And Tsitsipas will advance to the semi final. And on the, on the bottom half of the door, I have uh, Medvedev against Berrettini. And Medvedev will take care of him, battle him down, read his game. He's the superb ball striker we know, red hot player last year. He will get through to semi-final and meet RBA there. Because RBA will win against Daniel, Daniel Evans in three straight sets. But after a heroic performance in the first four rounds, uh, he will reach the second week. And after that, he will stay in New York and watch the rest of the tournament from the bench. All right, now we dig into the semifinals. We go with Medvedev against RBA, a tough battle. This guy has met before, we know that. I think they met at Cincinnati, if I'm not mistaken. RBA won there and he won against him at uh, Chennai. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, my head is, is standing still, but I think he met uh, Medvedev at Cincinnati. In this match, I think Medvedev will take his revenge. It will go into a four or five set battle. Both of these players can um, he, he, get through each other. They know each other. Yeah, they met recently. If Medvedev returns better than he did last time, he will win this match. If he moves better than he did last match, he will win this match again. It's just small adjustments for him because... Medvedev is almost, is almost complete. He has a great serve. He has a great backhand. An okay forward. He an, has an unorthodox style, but it's very effective. Maybe boring to some of you people, but uh, it, I think he will be the bigger one in this match. And the other semifinals between Tsitsipas and Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic, due to his consistency, to his solid... Mm, Baseline game, I think that he will prevail, he will win this match.
either in three straight sets or will drop one or two sets. I don't know how, but he will win this match. He's the biggest clutch player in the world. He's hard to get through. He take this this. Uh, he has some tricks in his book, uh, like these medical breaks, and uh, especially when the player his opponent plays uh, great. I have seen through. Uh, this, this is nothing. Uh, I don't want to talk bad about, but some unsportsmanship we have seen that many times, and uh, I, I want him to stop that because he's too good of a player to to have those to do those tricks and. Uh, Play by that. I, I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I don't like what I've seen. But City Pascal challenge him. He has all. He has the game. He's ready. But it's Novak. I haven't lost an official match this year, so I can't go against Novak because it's these young guys that's gonna beat him, not Federer and Nadal. Nadal and Federer's. Grand Slam meanings days are over against Nadal, uh, against Novak Djokovic. Even at French Open, I I, I think that uh, he will beat Rafa there because he reads Rafa's forehands of great. He whatever Rafa sends to him, he he does that, and he knows Federer's Achilles heels. He know how to put pressure on Federer also, so that's why uh, I don't expect them to defeat him at Grand Slams anymore. But it's not impossible, as you know. So we will have a final between Medvedev and uh, Novak Djokovic. And if those players are at the final, I don't think that the scenario will be like the last year where he all, where Medvedev almost defeated Rafa in the that fifth epic battle, five set epic battle. This time I think that if Novak reaches the final, He's too determined, he's too good, he's too solid, he's too hard to break. He had, he had his first serve, second serve uh, have impressed me most uh, after his forehand. He hits so many winners now with his forehand. It's because the speed of the court, he hits the ball early, he hits the ball clean, he moves well. I, I can't say anything bad uh, get, about Novak's game except his uh, volley and smash. But how often does he use that? He's a mastermind, a mastermind. Just look at the match against Raunic, where you lured him to, to, to the net in, 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 in the fifth set, in the third set, and make those great passing shots after that. He was really on the ropes, but he came back. He's the best clutch player. He's a mental beast. Uh, he's a monster when it comes to, uh, he's a physical monster also. So my pick for the winner, in about two weeks, the guy who's gonna lift the trophy, the guy is gonna lift his 18 Grand Slam title, it's Novak Djokovic, because I can't go against him. Of what I've seen him play during this year, this calendar year, especially early this year at Australian Open and Dubai, where he saved match points against uh, Monfils, uh, I don't know. My heart and my both my heart and mind says Novak Djokovic, and I will stick to my prediction. Uh, we will see what's happening. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye bye.